My name is Dr. Jessica Lindsay, and I am the Assistant Professor of Clarinet here at UNC Charlotte. Today I'm going to give you some tips on how to perform Etude number 13 from the 40 Etudes by Cyril Rose. Because this is a slow and lyrical etude, it's really important to plan your breaths um, throughout the entire etude. Please write them in and stick to them as you perform. So you can see in my part, I wrote some over the obvious um, rests, but I also decided in measure six, after the dotted eighth note, that that would be a great place for me to take a breath so that I could maintain a forte sound all the way from the end of measure four to the beginning of measure eight. This etude is in C sharp minor, or I should say the portion of this etude that we play for this audition is in C sharp minor with uh, four sharps in the key signature and with lots of accidentals. So please be sure to write in sharps or natural reminders as you need them, not to just circle specific notes. Um, I've done that all the way throughout um, this, this etude, writing in naturals or sharps to remind myself. In measure two and in measure four, plan to play the grace notes a little differently uh, than, than what you might imagine or what might be written. So I like to play them as dotted quarter with 16th note triplets and then the eighth note that's written. What's written is a half note and some grace notes and then the next eighth note. But in both instances, I would play them with this rhythm. In measure two, be sure to use your right hand pinky for the D sharp and your left hand pinky for the C sharp. This is an enlarged version of um, the end of measure two and the beginning of measure three. So even though we are playing the same note here at the end of measure two into the measure three, we have to switch pinkies. So as you play this C sharp with your left hand pinky, you need to add your right hand pinky and then remove your left hand pinky while counting so that you are able to play this B sharp with your left hand pinky. Just a reminder, B sharp is the enharmonic respelling of C natural. Then you will use your right hand pinky to play the D sharp, your left hand pinky to play this C sharp, and this right hand pinky to again play the B sharp. It's really important to alternate your pinkies in this way so that you don't get any extra notes. Because of the dramatic nature of this etude, dynamics deserve a great deal of attention, but can also be seen as a timbral or a color difference in your tone. Instead of just thinking really, really quiet or really, really loud, we need to be sure to support our piano sounds and make our mezzo forte sounds nice and full. So for example, the mezzo forte that starts here in measure eight um, might sound a little closer to the forte that you just ended on this long phrase. Even though we know our next dynamic marking is piano here, we can use these three notes to crescendo just a little bit to make that large leap of an octave a little more comfortable. Then we come back here and can have a really nice full mezzo forte with a nice decrescendo. And again, when we get to this piano, we can kind of hear it more as a color change so that we can support these higher notes with a beautiful sound. In measure 13, and again in measure 17, the two C sharps that are written, those C sharps can be transposed down to an F sharp on the top of the stand. And that is how I perform this etude. We have a nice, beautiful trill here in measure 21. And I'll just remind you that it needs to go to an A flat, start the trill by alternating notes a little bit more slowly, and then speed it up over the four beats and then be sure to add the grace note. And remember that you have an F sharp and a G natural going to the downbeat of the G sharp in measure 22. Thank you so much for listening to this video about how to work on etude number 13 from the 40 Etudes by Cyril Rose. My name is Jessica Lindsay and I am the Assistant Professor of Clarinet here at UNC Charlotte. Happy practicing. <laughs>